Animal Crossing has insane sales. The Xbox Series X source code is being held for ransom, and there is an interesting thing happening with Crash Bandicoot. All this and more on Wumpa Time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of Wumpa Time. My name is Canadian Guy, and I am joined by the one, the only, Shemp. Oh, me! Yes, it is me. Sorry we are late. We were just both very tired. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we've we had a lot on our plates, especially dealing with this the, the virus ah! and all the, all the problems that we've been dealing with. Uh, it's been kind of sucking, but you, what well, doesn't suck, Wumpa Time. And oh, we're going to yeah. start mm. off with uh, something else that also doesn't suck, Animal Crossing, because oh, yes. uh, Animal Crossing's uh, New, uh, New Horizon is absolutely uh, killing it when it comes to sales. It's New Horizon, New Horizons, right? I, I don't play yes. Animal Crossing, but yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you got it. Um, now, okay, I got it. This, this, okay. I'm gonna be honest. I, for some reason, something inside of me didn't think that the game would launch this well. I, mm-hmm. something about it was telling me that it wasn't gonna be as a big seller as like Pokemon and stuff like that, but. God, was I wrong? So, um, <laughs> according to multiple sources, mainly one uh, Daniel Ahmad, Ahmad, I'm mm-hmm. sorry if I mispronounced that, um, Daniel says that the first shipment of physical and digital sales for the first three days for Animal Crossing in Japan alone has exceeded 2.5 million units. No. In just three days, only in Japan. Oh my goodness. And that makes it the biggest opening for a Switch game in Japan and the biggest opening for Animal Crossing ever. Um, not only has Animal Crossing been selling like crazy, <laughs> this game alone has been selling more Switch consoles. And I don't know if this is only in Japan or if it's worldwide, but it has exceeded the lifetime sales of the Wii already. Which the Wii was something that was absolutely insane when it came to sales. And all this, hold on. All this during a quote unquote a lockdown and all during the coronavirus outbreak where people have been deterred to not go outside, to not go and buy games, and yet still Here we are. <laughs> here we are. Um, I actually have the numbers for the console. So yes, it it only is in Japan right now. It, uh Okay. So within that first 3 day or the first week of it being out, it uh pushed sales for Switch consoles in Japan by 392,000 consoles uh, within the last week. Uh, Let's see. That means it has sold more than the Wii in Japan in total. The Switch is still far behind the Wii in global sales, duh. Uh, Let's see. The official total worldwide sales for the Switch are 52.48 million. At the end of 2019, the Wii global globally is 101 million units, so it's still like halfway there. But it it exceeded the the Wii in Japan, yeah. which is huge. That is absolutely massive, and this has in Japan has passed Pokemon, which that's that's to think that to think that a game like Animal Crossing to pass Pokemon. Yeah, like just that. just like that, dude, just right away. That is absolutely crazy. That is insane. And here's the funny part, too, about Animal Crossing is that because of this outbreak as well, um, people are actually now hosting weddings and graduations through (laughs) Animal Crossing. Yes, I've seen a lot of that on Twitter. Which is uh, a very, very, very interesting thing. topic or a very interesting thing to do but i mean hey at the same token of time with this outbreak everyone's just trying to make do with what they got right so yeah uh, this is to see this is something that's nice but wow wow <laughs> is animal crossing just i a mean monster right now i've seen a graduation held in microsoft word i think i would well really prefer animal yeah they used someone just used emojis and they put it behind the the emoji of the graduate uh, the graduation girl and they would press space to like slowly walk up to the podium that uh, <laughs> what what that yeah I'll, I'll take animal crossing uh graduations any day <laughs> and like um specifically there was a uh there was a class in i think 
where was it in Queens, New York? I think it was. Yeah, they mm. helped their best friend celebrate his graduation from the New York City Fire Department's Emergency Medical Service Academy um, with <laughs> with Animal Crossing. Aww. So they, they they had like because Animal Crossing you can do up to eight players. You can make your you can make your island public, give out a code, and then a bunch of people come in here. So everyone just kind of sat down in rows of chairs with like graduation gowns on, and they would walk Aww. up and then uh, they would walk up and in the game you can do like a clapping emoji, so everyone clapped for them. It's cute. It, it's it's Aww. cute. I really like that. That's really sweet. Um, but uh, you want to know what's not sweet? You want to know what's, yeah. what's really not sweet? Sony's Segway. lies. So Sony's <laughs> li- uh, probably lie. I don't know. But um, Sony has said that the PS5 launch is still entirely unaffected by the coronavirus, and I'm not so Bull sure Lonnie. about that. I Bull I don't Lonnie. I don't know, man. That like we've talked about how we think that they're far behind, and they they have the gall to come out and be like, "Yeah, we're on schedule. No, this is not affecting us in any way, shape, or form." And no, no, Sony, come on now. I love we, Sony. Come on. We know. Come on. We know. Now, here's the big thing. And I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say for realsies that the launch date's unaffected by the coronavirus. Great. That's that's fantastic. Hey, um, GameStop, uh, the biggest GameStop in the world. How many consoles did you get? Uh, th- one. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. A- Oh, okay. Um, how, how many did you get, uh, EB Games? Well, out of the collective 30,000 stores, one and a half. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great. This is what's going to happen is that either they're lying, and yes, yeah. there's going to be a delay or an issue or problem, or B, there's going to be an issue or a problem, and it's just going to be the supply and demand. It's not... It, it's yeah, going to it, be uh... where... <laughs> like... I remember consoles would get, or uh, stores, they get like 10 consoles, you know, for the launch t- consoles, you get 10. Smaller stores might get five. Even yeah. mom and pa shops might get three, right? They, they would, they would, yeah. But the thing is, is that there is no way, I just, I don't see how the coronavirus has not slowed down the, the production. And not even on just the hardware side, but the software side too, the games, yeah, right? the games like, of course, there's a lot of studios like, uh, like Toys for Bob, for example. They they can work from home. They've shown that they work from home. But like bigger studios like Naughty Dog, like the amount of people that work in there that need to work in uh like one building to work together, that's yeah. not something you can just do at home. Last of Us Part Two is not a game that you can do by working together at home. I, I'm yeah, sorry, no. like it, there's no way it could feasibly be done. Um, the computers, and, the comp- that yeah, that would mean that you oh, have yeah, to depend dude. on every single person to have a up to snuff computer right now. I understand networking. I understand sending it to a different render farm that you have off site and get it rendered. And yeah, I get that. I understand that point. But the issue is, is that to be able to even animate or preview these things, right? You need to have a top tier computer. You need to have an industry standard computer and not everybody at home has an industry standard computer. Not only that, you need the dev kits. You can't just take that yes. home. That's expensive. You need the dev kits and you need the specific software on your computer. That's probably only Sony Sony certified. Like I'm sure you can't just take that home. Some some rep has to come out to your house and install it if they really wanted to. With a game like uh, or a studio with Toys for Bob that used the Unreal Engine, yeah, totally feasible. You know yeah. that uh, the, that engine's already um, everywhere. It, the engines are everywhere and it's already tailored for consoles. With something right. like Last of Us, for example. You need to constantly test that, and it, you, I'm sure you don't have access to the servers at home. Like, there's no way. Like, I'm sure that maybe like the heads do, maybe like the like the production heads, but that's another line of because uh, here's the thing too is that now you're trusting everybody's bandwidth, you're trusting oh, yeah. everyone else's bandwidth, you're trusting everyone else's uh because there are some people that uh, and I knew people like this. They uh, I worked in an animation studio. And they would come to work, they would do their stuff, they'd go home, and they wouldn't even touch their computer because they were just on a computer all day. Yeah, right? they're, they're sick like, of it. Yeah, they're sick of it. So they, they'll play a game or their internet is the internet usage is low. Now that they're at home and self quarantining, what's gonna happen is and imagine this line of connections. Imagine d- doing a shot, animating a shot. Your computer has to be up to snuff to that. But first off, you need to download the assets to your computer. Oh, then God knows how big those assets are. 
Right. You have to download the necessary assets. Okay. Let's say you download the necessary assets. Cool. Now you have to animate it. All right. Now you animate it. Okay, cool. Now what happens is it gets sent to a production head to have to review it first. Well, in order for the production head to view it, they have to down, you have to export an MOV or whatever. Then you have to take that and then send it to the animator, to the head. Then he has to watch it. He or she has to watch it and then give their revisions, go back, redo it. And then once it gets approved, it has to get sent to a render farm and then back to the head again. Dude, the rendering, like, for especially for a game, like, so I was yeah. actually talking about this earlier. I'm good buddies with a lot of the modding community for a lot of games. And, right. uh, for example, we were we were discussing Sonic Forces and why the modding community kind of, like, died off for that. In right. order to, like, render a good level, like, one level for a game like Sonic Forces, you need, like, an RX, you need, like, an RX card, like, 2080 or something just yeah. to render that one level. It is... Yeah ridiculous what goes into like com- compiling a level with all of the the coding the assets the triggers and all that stuff I, I really underestimated how much power it took like just for one level you need mm-hmm. like no no one in the modding community has a computer that beefy enough to render that complex of a level i can't imagine yeah. what any of these ps5 levels look like or games in general yeah, it's going to fry people's computers. Now, for some people, it's easy. For some people, like if you're like a concept artist, yeah, absolutely. They, they oh, already yeah. do. They already do work off. So I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the the animators. I'm talking about the uh, the developers. I'm talking about the people that, I mean, they're all developers, but I'm talking about the people that are building the levels. I'm talking about the people that are like, this is the kind of stuff, uh, even programming. And imagine the communication that's required. You know, in an office space, you could just hop up and run over to your buddy and say, hey, um, you know, fire me this code. I need to check something out. Or, hey, let me just adjust something here quick. You can't do that. It's, hey, you know, sending a message. And then, of course, you're at home, so you're likely going to procrastinate, right? And things are going to happen. And there is so many room, there's so much room for error to say that nothing is going to get delayed in terms of game development wise right now, like stuff that's going to be coming next year or the year after there's no way there's no way that there's not going to be some form of a delay either that or it's going to get rushed. So the thing is companies lie all the time. Like it's nothing new. (laughs) They'll say something just because, you know, investors want to hear it. Fans want to hear it. People who are on the fence about buying the product, they want to hear that so they can confirm that they're going to buy the product and then be like, Oh yeah, this isn't actually happening. I'm, I'm not surprised if they are lying because that can be a huge possibility. Um, Microsoft did it all the time. Every yeah. company does it. Uh, just everyone wants to hear what they want to hear. So mm. if we get like, oh, hey, uh, the PS5 is delayed until February 2021, I would totally like see it coming. There's no way totally. that that, especially with how far behind P- the PS5 is, we don't even know what the design is. Mark Starney yeah. himself in that GDC uh, event that they showed, even yeah. he said like, yeah, we're still uh, trying to make sure everything fits and everything. Like they're, they're not even done. They're not done finalizing. We've seen the Xbox Series X leak like 15 times. We know what it looks yeah. like. <laughs> we've had people tear it down. We've seen, yeah. we've seen it the inside and out. And it's not even a matter of, oh, I'm impatient. I really want to see it. It's just like, okay, we went from, oh, I'm impatient. I really want to see it to this is just bad business practice. Like this is the left brain kicking in and saying, dude, this is not good. This isn't more of like, oh, we want to see it. It's more of just like, oh, are they confident enough to show us something or is nothing finished? And they're just kind of talking just to talk. I don't know, but uh, uh, it's, it's something that I'm very nervous about. It's something that I, and even like when we talked about the fact where, you know, Mark Cerny said, Hey, we tested a hundred games and yeah, everything worked fine. And most of them will work. And it was a miscommunication and saying that it would work in the boost mode. But again, yeah. but again, it's like, okay, there's these miscommunications that are happening. There are things, it's like they're scrambling internally and there's things that are not being interpreted correctly. And everyone's just like, Sony, what are you doing? 
Well, it was also a miscommunication with the the PS5 event because Mark Sardi said we tested the top 100. Like you said, we t- we tested the top 100 PS4 games to make sure that they all work and everything. And people thought that that meant on like at launch only a hundred PS4 games would be compatible. And right. people were freaking out like, oh, I thought it was fully compatible with the PS4. Oh, that sucks. What is that? And then they went out and said, no, 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 no. It does actually work with all the PS4 games. Oh, okay. And I'm wondering if that's just like a they're just saying that just to say it. I don't know. I don't know because I mean it would it would be really weird to be able to do that because then they could get hit with uh, false advertising and I mean th- they're probably going to be like patching it and stuff. But uh, speaking of patches, <gasps> so anyway, um, Modern Warfare Two. D- did you ever play Modern Warfare Two, Shump? Yeah, I did. Uh, was that the one that had no Russian, or am I thinking of another one? Yeah, no, that was no Russian. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, I'm that glad no you know Russian. what I'm. I'm glad you know. Like, oh yeah, that, that was it. That was it. <laughs> Yeah, yep, 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 that, that was no option. Um, so, I, I I seem to know more about this because I, I work with someone who, like, lives and breeds Call of Duty, so it, right. I, I unfortunately know more about this, but um, <laughs> this is an Activision product. We are more familiar with Activision at this point. We know how they work and everything, so I'm not mm-hmm. surprised to see this, but um, the new Modern Warfare reboot, they recently launched the uh, Warzone, mm-hmm. the free-to-play Warzone mode, which we talked about briefly, and it's constantly yeah. getting patches. Like, for example, CTR would get monthly content, monthly stuff added to it. This game's doing the same thing. Right. Um, but with a recent patch, uh, data miners found a way to just, you know, look at all the new stuff that was added, and apparently Modern Warfare 2 remastered assets were just kind of, like, dropped in the patch, like, yeah. I, like I'm looking at the Imgur album, and I have the full logo, the full artwork banner, the new banner with the new logo, an extended banner with the logo, and then uh, three renders of the character Ghost, like HD renders. Um, right. And this was just in there. Like, I don't think it was... Um, just sitting pretty? Yeah, it was like just like uh, MW2R.jpg. Like, it, it was just there. Um, <laughs> oh, all right. So, so we had the Modern Warfare remaster that came out alongside Infinite Warfare, and Activision bundled it with Infinite Warfare because no one wanted to buy Infinite Warfare, and that right. was the only way to buy the remaster. It was mm-hmm. kind of dumb, and people hated it, but hey, yeah. it, it got Infinite Warfare numbers. Like Investors would be like, oh, look, that, that game sold well. Um, so basically people were like when is the second one going to get remastered because that's more people like the second one uh yeah. and my thing is they rebooted modern warfare so the, right. the game that's out now is a reboot it has some of the same characters but it's a different story different gameplay different mm. look different aesthetic different everything and then you have the remaster of modern warfare 2 now listen i work at a game store people are stupid they're going to see this on the <laughs> shelf like <laughs> They're going to see this on the shelf and be like, whoa, the new one came out already? We're going to have to be like, no, it's a remaster of the Um, old one. And then they're going to look at the new one and be like, oh, is this one also a remaster? We're going to be like, no, that's the new one. It's stupid. I hate that they did this. I don't get it. I hate this trend of naming the new thing the old thing. It's dumb. It's a reboot. Yeah, It's just a reboot. Yeah, I wish that they would have like... Uh, even if they did like something different, even slightly different, like Modern Warfare version two, right? Like yeah, something... or just Modern Warfare. Uh, just don't call it Modern Warfare. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't. I remember. I remember when uh, we were doing. Uh, I was talking to a manager at EB Games GameStop, and when they announced that it was just called Call of Duty Modern Warfare, their face hit the floor, and they were just oh, like, dude, same. Like my my face was like. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> Are you kidding of, me? All I thought was like, okay, you can't be serious. Modern Warfare. Now now here's the thing. No shade at the quality of the game because I've heard that the most recent Call of Duty was fantastic. Oh, I, I can tell you. It, it's a really well put together Call of Duty yeah. considering the the loot box fiasco that was World War II and uh, Black Ops 4. People hated yeah. that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is that the... The thing is, is that like, not we're not hitting the quality of the game. What we're hitting is the quality of the naming and the branding. Because the thing is, is that you got Modern Warfare Two remastered. Okay, what's the next game after the follow the same storyline as Modern, <laughs> Modern Warfare, Warfare? The new Modern Warfare. Two. Gonna... 
right? I didn't even so, think about that. So n- now what's going to happen is is that we're going to have literally within the span of three years two Modern Warfare twos. We're going to have we're going to have mo- so that means there's going to be Modern Warfare two, Modern Warfare two remastered, and then Modern Warfare two two years later. Oh, oh my! Because hurts. next year will be yeah. Next year is going to be Black Ops, right? Next then, year is going to be. Uh, See, that would make and, more sense if the, all this is going on during, like, Black Ops 5. Like, at, at least you're yeah. differentiating it. But that's... I don't... It's stressing me out thinking of Activision having to support all of these games while the other oh, yeah. games are launching. Because the Wii servers for Black Ops are still up, dude. Like, yeah. come on! Now, They're still alive. The, the story with uh, this leak is that there are two other things that go into this. Um... The data miners for the new update found that there are maps. There are code names for the Modern Warfare 2 maps along with the remastered assets. So that means that they're going to add a new map to Warzone. That's going to mm-hmm. be a Modern Warfare 2 map, and that's going to be advertising for the remaster. Well, okay, that right. makes sense. Uh, they have two multiplayers going on at the same time to support each game. So mm-hmm. while you play the map on Warzone, it will promote the remaster. Uh, right. Another thing is that... Uh, I think a while ago, uh, not a while ago, I think like maybe three days or so, three or four days ago, uh, mm. a listing popped up on the Korean rating board for Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, yeah. and it, it was scheduled to release for PC, PS4, and Xbox One later this year. So, so it, 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 we're it's probably saying... Gonna be- we're yeah. probably going to be getting it in... Well, you see, you know, this... Uh, this ties really well into a thing that we're going to be talking about later on, but uh, Call of Duty always uh, gets announced in like usually May, yeah, either end of April, uh, April May, because we know Activision follows the six month rule, the five to seven month rule, which I know a lot of people have uh, criticized me on it, but I stand by it. I will die on that flag. Uh, I will die on that hill <laughs> because I sat. I remember one day I sat down and I spent hours calculating for like the past seven years. They have been doing the exact same pattern. They've been doing it where uh, Call yeah. of Duty is now. They've released teasers. They've released teasers, but not an announcement. Like I remember Black Ops 4's teaser came out in March, um, but it was like 15 seconds. And it just said four and it says full announcement in April. It was either end of April or May, which again falls in the five to seven month rule. Yeah, exactly. And I can, I can attest to this because I just looked up the reveal trailer for modern warfare by the official call of duty channel. And it was May 30th, uh, 2019. Right. Um, right. And this has something that I have been doing for years, not just with call of duty and crash, uh, even back to their older games. Like I think, yeah. um, Skylanders, Skylanders, uh, Pitfall, The Lost Expedition, that was like E3 2008. That's like back then they were still doing it. Yeah, exactly. So this is where it's interesting because if they're going to be announcing uh, there, if they're, that means that they're going to be announcing uh, Marvel Warfare 2 Remastered very soon, which would be either next month or the month after. So within two months, we're going to see this trailer and probably if we're already seeing Marvel Warfare 2 assets, it could be the end of April. Um, or early May, and like you said, it's probably going to be a uh, it's going to be like a war zone promotion where it's just like, hey, if you maybe if um, the, you know the maps from uh, Modern Warfare Two will be available in War Zone to promote the game, right? Which is a very, very smart choice to do in terms of advertising. Oh yeah, um, and <laughs> keep it. I want people to keep in mind that in order to get a game rated, you have to spend money. Like, it, it, oh, like yeah. the ESRB and the Peggy rating system, they all just don't do it because they have to. They do it because they get paid to. In order exactly. to get your game rated and put on store shelves, because stores will not shelve a game that doesn't have a rating, uh, right. or if it has an AO by rating, law. they will refuse to do it by law. Um, yeah. So you have to spend money in order to do it, and. A similar listing popped up for the Peggy rating system, but Peggy only rated the. Uh, it was on February 26, I believe, and they only rated the campaign. Specifically, on the website, it was called Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 uh, Campaign Remastered. So it looks like right. they're going to be releasing the multiplayer and the campaign differently, which is. Weird. Weird. I don't know if it's going to be like you pop Unless, the disc in and it downloads both of them separately right. like it did with Black Ops 3. 
I don't know, or unless they're going to, be, it will be together and fine, but that the campaign is done and now they're working on the multiplayer, right? And it's that's a, just how how the Peggy oh, um, hold on system I, works. I, sorry, I just read something that hurt my head even more. Um, there's another oh. rumor that the Call of Duty for 2020 is going to be a rebooted Black Ops game. Are, are, uh, oh my god! Are they just like guys? People don't like the new stuff. They don't like Advanced Warfare. Let's just keep redoing the same game <laughs> and just keep releasing it and see if people keep buying it. If the, okay, that one's a rumor. The Modern Warfare Two remaster is basically confirmed at this point. Like, there's well, I mean, no if you way find this assets, is happening. If you find assets in the code, that, come yeah, on. Like, okay, how much more evidence do you need? Like, I'm not exaggerating when I say, look, this is literally the um. The uh, this is the logo. This is the banner. This is everything you need. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's all there. It's like it's literally there. It's not just designed. doing it for fun. Like oh, it'd be yeah. cool if we just drop this in there. Oh yeah, exactly. They found it in the source code. Come on, guys. And speaking of source code, <gasps> segue. <laughs> My favorite oh, news topic. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> oh man, this when I read this headline, Shemp. Shep, when I read this headline, I just sat there and I just stared at it, and the only words that could go across my head was, "We gotta talk about this some other time." No, we yeah, you sent to. you sent this to me on Twitter, and I was like, I just woke up, and I was like, I man, I'm just tired. What what did I just read? <laughs> yeah, you you read it three <laughs> times, and you're trying to you're trying to figure out is there a spelling error, grammar yeah, error? No, and I'm like, is this an onion article? Like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the title of it, and the worst part is, it's true. Is and I quote, this is the exact <laughs> title from the IGN article Xbox Series X graphics source code reportedly stolen and being held for a hundred million dollar <laughs> ransom. They just have like a flash drive with a gun <laughs> next to it, like, give me <laughs> pay up or the flash drive gets it. <laughs> okay. So, oh my lord! <laughs> <laughs> so oh no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. AMD revealed this. Yeah. So what? okay, a hacker had apparently stole the Xbox Series X graphics source code, and is literally holding it for a ransom. It comes from the AMD website, and they explain the situation, saying we were contacted by someone who claimed to have test files related to a subset of our current and future graphics products. And according to Torrent Freak, um, it was found on a hacked computer. And at first it was rumored to be the Series X uh, GPU, which later on they found out was true. And segments of the code was posted on GitHub. Yeah, and the, then like the, the source code website. <laughs> yeah. And the hacker is asking for $100 million dollars for the code and is threatening to dump the entirety of the stolen data if a buyer isn't found. Now, the thing is, this isn't just like, this is for uh, the source code for Navi 10, which is the graphic archi architecture for the new Xbox, but it's also the future code for the future Navi 21, which is going to be like in future Xbox hardware and stuff. So this is like long term stuff. Right. And if you think that, oh, this guy is just faking it, well, it's faked enough that apparently there is a DMCA request that was taken down by AMD to take down what was, because uh, they leaked a little bit, right? Just, and, just a tad bit. Uh, yeah, and it was, this is, oh, okay, okay. We gotta rewind here. Okay. Last week we were given, man, last week... We were given Xbox props. We were yeah. like, man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> we were like, man, Xbox, you guys are actually doing really good. This is really nice to see. We hope the best for you guys. What happened? What happened? You had don't... Secret Agent Man break into AMD and apparently <laughs> figure it out and stole your graphics source. Like, Here's the thing. They leaked that, and that's literally tens of millions of dollars just leaked out into the public. Yeah, we don't know where it is, but he's still saying, like, uh, give me $100 million. Right, he's saying $100 million. So the thing is, 
This was found November last year. I mean, we're just now hearing about it. Now, AMD went into damage control. Like, Microsoft hasn't said anything. Mm-hmm. This is all AMD. Uh, yeah. AMD went into damage control, and they specified, in December 2019, we were contacted by someone who claimed to have t- the test files related to a subset of our current and future graphic products, some of which were recently posted online, but have since been taken down, yada, right. yada, blah. Um, they said, let's see... Uh, they have stolen additional files that have not been made public. We believe the stolen graphic IP is not core to the competitiveness or security of our graphics products. So they're saying yes, it that does. they're <laughs> like, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Like it, it's whatever, man. This I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Like this does not affect us in any way. And like they go behind the mic, like this affects us in every way. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, the thing is, if you if this didn't affect you in every way, quote unquote, why are you releasing a DM, uh, DMCA? Yeah, you like you were freaking out. And they also specify right after that, we are working closely with law enforcement officials and other ex- experts as a part of an ongoing criminal investigation. Dude, this this like elite hacker Reddit gamer d- guy is now like <laughs> under criminal investigation for stealing yeah. a video game console source code it is not worth it oh this is bad this is really but if they do here's the thing if they do leak it if they do leak it and it does start going wild and starts going crazy the thing is is that other companies like nvidia or literally anybody can hop on board and be able to literally mimic something similar and then build off of that something different. Dude, the bootlegs, and, the, the like the Chinese bootlegs, like we, we talk about that a lot as like a yeah. a goof and a gaff. It's just funny, haha, whatever. But like, come on. If someone out there gets that source code and they just release a cheaper Series X, like, yeah, it plays the games. Yeah, it could yeah, it could. They could. They really could. All they need to do is read it. Yeah, that's it. It's incredible. And they could literally mass produce a really cheap, really garbage looking console, but it doesn't matter. They could literally make a franking console. It looks like garbage, but if it plays the game and it's $300 cheaper, nobody's there's going to be people that are going to be like, well, I mean, who cares? And they're just going to buy the, the knockoff. Yeah, exactly. The thing is. It doesn't matter if like the source code is in the knockoff console, um, as long as it reads the games, it doesn't matter. If you look at the source code and you get an understanding of what it can do, you can backwards engineer your fake console to oh, play absolutely. the games. There are tons of clone consoles for like the NES, the Super Nintendo, the Genesis, oh, the yeah. GBA, all those things because one, they're easy to emulate, and two, the source code's been out there for a while. Like it's exactly. not that hard to emulate that stuff. If this gets out there, that makes emulation for the Xbox Series X what that, that that puts it far ahead anything any other system has gotten like we are yeah. just now getting good ps3 emulation yeah finally and we're about to go into the next generation so uh, x uh, this is even xbox's fault though this is amd's fault. Yeah, this like, is this amd is, and uh, but they also want to take it down they're, they're trying to say this doesn't affect us at all because like you were mentioning earlier about companies lying to make sure that the yep. investors stay happy no, this doesn't affect anything. It's just a, a minor bump that will be taken care of. Well, you, you won't even feel it. And then behind the scenes, they're scrambling and freaking out. Like, here's the thing. This happened in December, and we're just hearing of it now after the Xbox Series X was revealed and after everything was done, and now we're hearing about this. It's... So it, it's it's weird because AMD said that they were contacted directly by the person yeah. who had it. So they weren't going public with it. Do you think... Like Microsoft knew like right away, or was AMD like ah oh, just, just just keep it on the keep it on the down low? I don't think that they would have told Microsoft. I don't think they would have. I think that that would have been something that would have been a huge mistake. Because I mean, they would otherwise... have been they're too far into production, dude. Oh, oh yeah, they're way too far into production. But I mean, if I was Xbox and I would have known that the AMD graphics would have is floating around the internet right now, I would be wary of like announcing it or releasing the console and showing oh, some stuff yeah. because I would want to be like, hey. We got to get this locked down and secure before we start getting some fake, terrible um, consoles that start popping up. So there's one more topic for today. One more. One more. It's interesting. Yes. Very interesting. Uh, you know more about this than I do, um, but we yeah. we did we did some like detective work before we started this recording. Yeah, just to make sure that we, we kind of had um, uh, a handle on what's going on. So here's the thing. Crash Bandicoot. 
If you don't know who he is, who are you? Uh, and <laughs> who? Uh, who? Crash who? Uh, who Bandicoot? So, <laughs> uh, something minor has happened recently. And the thing is, is that it could just be minor. Of course, it could be minor. But we know with how everything is kind of coming and tying together, things are starting to shift and change and things are starting to look interesting. So um, if you haven't followed my channel, I make sure, uh, you know, I cover everything Crash, Spyro, and even with a little itty bitty detail, I talk about it because it could be a very small detail that unlocks more other details, right? Yeah. So recently, um, the Crash Bandicoot, site was updated now that sounds regular regular maintenance why what does that have to do with anything the interesting thing is is that a lot of assets for the insane trilogy is starting to get pulled yeah um like for what we mean is like whenever you would go to the crash bandicoot website uh mm -hmm. like the homepage, not for the insane trilogy or ctr <clears throat> if you go to the homepage, crashbandicoot.com Yes, it would go. It would show you a logo for CTR, and it would say "Crash is back in the driver's seat." But um, behind it would be a sizzle reel of footage from the Insane Trilogy and CTR, just to showcase mm -hmm. here are the two games that are out in the market. Um, right. But recently, something has happened. Uh, the Insane Trilogy footage has been removed from the opening reel, which is interesting because if you think about it, CTR is the spin-off game to Crash Bandicoot. The mainline game is Crash, so you would think that they would keep Crash Bandicoot as their main source, but they have CTR and they removed Insane Trilogy. Yes. Um, now, mm -hmm. this is a little bit weird. Uh, if you, you can still go to the top left corner and you can still go to the Insane Trilogy and you can still see them as a reel of the Insane Trilogy when you go to that page, but how they have it set is that they have CrashBandicoot.com then they have crashbandicoot.com forward slash crash bandicoot insane. And then they have crash bandicoot forward slash CTR nitro fueled. And they have like sub pages, but the main page yeah. crashbandicoot.com insane is gone. Yes. And I believe, I don't know if they <coughs> updated this, but if you go to the crash bandicoot main page on the top, you'll have the top left. You'll have the logo. Uh, a drop down for insane, a drop down for CTR, and then a very prominent blank space, and then the login and sign up. Um, right, that's pretty distinct. Like that, yeah. that is one big gap that they could easily spaced out these two. So it's prime time for a new game announcement. Like, right. and one, like the moment it drops this thing's going to get updated right away. I Because th we've seen minor updates. We've seen some text on the, the website get like some drop yep. shadows. We've seen some things get uh, switched around to make it look a lot nicer. Mm. I'm thinking they already have it They already have it ready, and once the trailer drops, they're just going to hit the publish button and the whole thing's going to get updated. Yeah, and here's the thing. And now this is where we kind of tie into something that's interesting earlier. So you remember how we said the Modern Warfare 2 remastered appears in the latest Modern Warfare update? Well, yeah. this came there and this was updated by a user by the Gaming Revolution. Now, we talked about the Gaming Revolution before and we talked about the Wrath of Cortex remaster and we were mm -hmm. like, no, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. And then yeah. he came forward and he actually corrected and he says, I might have made a mistake. It's called it's currently slated as Crash Bandicoot 4. I assumed it was Wrath of Cortex, but it's just Crash Bandicoot 4 at the moment. So they're kind of, it sounds like they're retconning Wrath of Cortex entirely. Uh, which I, or, or, yeah. or they could be pulling a Call of Duty and just, <laughs> they could just no, be please, releasing please the don't. same game. Please, please don't. don't. Please don't. So here's the thing, is that if they are doing that, if they're rewinding and they're like, okay, we're re-releasing Crash Bandicoot 4 and the Gaming Revolution is right because the Gaming Revolution report on a whole bunch of stuff and the one thing that he had reported on was that the Mar was that Modern Warfare Two Remastered was coming? Yeah, yeah, and, and it was like, like we just talked about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He said that Modern Warfare Two Remastered is coming. Now, here's the funny thing about that is that there is another comment that he said that updated, and this is where I'm getting interested. Is that there's another comment that he said that the next project that Activision will be releasing from Activision that's new is the new Crash game. Mm-hmm. 
Now, here's the thing is that that would mean that this game would have to come out before Call of Duty, right? If it's the next yeah. game. So here's the thing is that, and we know that Call of Duty gets announced in May. So if Call of Duty is announced in May, right? What a, What's going on in April? And the thing is that the site was updated on the 25th of March, right? The 25th mm-hmm. of March, the whole site was updated. And there's some of us speculating that when you tie everything together and you put everything together, it's possible that they're putting Crash Bandicoot into the Spyro slot. And because remember, next week is also going to be to the day. Uh, it was April. Well, when did they announce Spyro? Was it April 5th or 4th? Uh, I believe it was the 4th, but I'm going to double check. Yeah, I'm trying to remember when they announced Spyro Reignited. It was either the 4th or the 5th. I'm not 100% uh, certain. Let's see. It was it's just a year ago. Oh, the 5th, April 5th. April 5th. Okay. So Spyro was announced in April and it's possible that Crash Bandicoot takes that spot as well because mm-hmm. it's also interesting that it lines up with the fact that if it gets announced in April and we do the 5 to 7 month trick, um it would land in September. And it's just ironic that September is uh, the anniversary of the original Crash Bandicoot that came out in 1996. And we know that Activision does like to go for those anniversary releases. They did try with Spyro. Unfortunately, uh, they did. Uh, they had to delay it two months due to the production. But their, oh, initial, yeah. but their initial slated release was the same month that Spyro was released in as well. So there's a lot of behaviors here that are lining up. Yeah, and it makes sense because I know, like you said, Activision likes to put it on the the anniversary dates because it gives them a reason. Like instead of like having to do something special for something on an anniversary, they just release a trailer for it and say, "Oh, that's what we did." Because yeah. with for example, with Sonic games, they would release and they would be part of like the oh the 25th anniversary game, the 19th anniversary game. That's a lot of pressure because that's yeah. that's a strict deadline. If it's a trailer, it's just like oh hey, guys, happy anniversary, bam, here's the new game. That makes a right. lot more sense. That makes a lot more time to get something ready. It right. I know we've talked before. Activision has a lot of very very strict schedules and right. Um, if everything goes aligned, I'm pretty sure. Like we saw, I think we saw on Twitter that Activision put up a bunch of private videos under their new trailer or new new games playlist so, or something like that. So that that was debunked. Um, okay. Because the reason why was that they were privated videos from the past. They were all the Destiny stuff. But oh, of course, okay. we know what happened there. So um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Destiny and uh, Bungie went running for the hills. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so this whole crackpot of a theory put together, what are your thoughts on it, Shemp? What 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 do you think? Do you think... Because my original prediction was June. I thought Crash was going to yeah. be announced during the E3 event and then come out alongside with the PlayStation 5. But I'm open to being wrong. What do you think? So I think the whole... I do think the COVID-19 situation affected everything. I think it yeah. put a lot of things out of whack, and right now they're kind of doing damage control. Um, yeah. I do think a new Crash game is inevitable, but I think yes, the fact that same. it's getting announced soon is very, very likely. There is no feasible reason why we shouldn't get some sort of announcement because everything is starting to line up. Um, now, whether or not that will be a PS5 launch or exclusive or something like that, like we talked yeah. about, completely up for debate. Uh, but I yeah. do believe that this is going to be a... It may be a cross-gen game, or it might yeah, still I just be a current be gen. Um if it's a cross-gen game, that explains why it's been a lot longer for us to get an announcement because a lot more has yeah. been gone. Um, yeah. They might be moving to Unreal, which takes advantage of all the PS5 and Xbox Series X specs. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's going to perform or look on the PS4 and the Xbox One, especially the Xbox One like original because modern yeah. games are really struggling to run on that thing. But yeah. it's, it's, it's doable. I do believe wholeheartedly we're going to get something announced like it could be announced like tomorrow or the day after please, and then please autumn- don't I, and uh, my anxiety my anxiety <laughs> that's, that's fair and then, and then we'll have one you'll have content and two we'll have a big thing to talk about on uh, next week's episode yeah there's gonna be a lot to talk about i mean when 
when that next crash game gets announced, things are gonna go nuclear, like legit nuclear. Things are gonna go nuts. Yeah, Activision's um, trying to make Crash their Mario, and uh, I think they're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is that if, especially if this is a brand new game, because the thing is, this will be the first brand new Crash game I think in thirteen years. Mm-hmm. Think about that. 13 years now i kind of consider ctr more of a brand new game now but it still has its roots in an original game yeah it's a remake plus it's a remake plus and it's like okay they're straying away from you know the what they had originally had but nonetheless it is what it is Th- to see a brand new crash game is something that's going to be crazy to see <laughs> yeah um and the sooner we get it the better uh because yeah. we are in like a, a, i know a lot of people who are in a very dry spell for nintendo directs and then that yeah. mini just kind of dropped and everyone was like oh my god oh god oh god, oh god. um yeah, so yeah but it was kind of just like a eh. a lot of people yeah were really it was it. something like everyone was still <laughs> like grasping onto something just yeah. they want anything it was so such a dry period now that's going on with crash at least we have ctr to like give us something um yeah. some new content but we're wanting a new game right away we want to see something we want to see a title oh, yeah. a and- teaser something but i and i think that they're going to be doing some cross promotional stuff in ctr for uh the new game i think that they're going to like you know maybe each month leading up when they if they do like a monthly patch they might say hey here's a new character that is uh you know that was introduced in the trailer right or here's a new mask and then maybe they go along leading up to the release maybe a month before the release they do one little mini grand prix and they add a new track and it's based off of the new game you know, something like that, like, because I feel like CTR could be used as a cross promotional, just like how they're using Warzone to cross promote Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. I think they could use CTR to promote the new Crash game. Yeah, uh, Activision has their hands full, especially with like live games, uh, games yeah. as a service, essentially. Um, so, yeah, all hands on deck for Crash. <laughs> De- definitely. So, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in to yet another episode of Wampa Time. Uh, if you want to hear us on the go, we are literally everywhere we possibly could be. We're on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music. I think I got the most of the big ones out of the way. Uh, and of yeah. course, you got YouTube. Of course, you got yes. YouTube, which is what you're probably watching on if you're watching or listening. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we usually re- release a podcast every Saturday, but today was an exception. So you got a special edition of Wampa Time, the Sunday edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and don't um, yeah, and don't forget oh. to follow us over on Twitter, uh, Shemp of, at uh, Shemp official for my lovely friend and Canadian <gasps> guy A with an extra H because we are still looking for the other one. Everyone on Twitter, help us get your magnifying glasses out. Um, and if pigeons? you do, and for all the people that do carry pigeons, yes, please. And for all <laughs> the people that do listen to us on uh, podcast platforms like Google Podcast, Spotify, and all that, be sure to like rate us and everything. Let us know that you guys okay. actually watch us there. It does help us out uh, with ratings and everything. We really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, SoundCloud, all that stuff. All the links are in the description of the YouTube video. So if you want to know where we are, just go there. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, that's everything. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>